Okay, so in this lesson of our tutorial, <clears throat> we need to go ahead and model the plus and minus buttons of our iPhone. And unfortunately, the resolution of the image that we were using for our blueprints aren't high enough that we can actually model off inside of, you know, the iPhone project file scene. So, since and since we only really need a plus and minus button, we necessarily don't really need that sort of image plane to basically base off of. And so what we need to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead here and start modeling our plus and minus shapes. But there's a few ways that we can do this. Um, and I'm basically going to show you the easiest way that I feel is going to give you the best solution to go ahead and model that shape specifically. A lot of people you'll see that they will typically you know put a lot of triangles inside a button like that when they're modeling the iPhone simply because it's somewhat of a complex shape and a lot of people don't necessarily want to go ahead and like take the the extra time to go ahead and make a quad geometry. I'm sort of a stickler for quad geometry and so I'm gonna model it in a way that it's going to give us uh, the ability to go ahead and actually make quad geometry. So what I want to go ahead here and do is I'm just going to simply use you know a rigging tool that I use to create NURBS curves and so I'm first going to go ahead and create a circle and I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees and I'm also going to go ahead and create a plus symbol and rotate this 90 degrees okay and now I'm going to go ahead and just scale the circle up here so that we have a bigger circle and so that the plus symbol is actually going to match better here okay so I'm now going to go ahead and just adjust some of these verts so we can get this to match the the iPhone blueprint a little bit better here and that looks like it's going to match match fine okay so now what I want to go ahead and do here is you're probably saying to yourself well how are you going to make geometry from this the easiest way for us to actually go ahead and make geometry from this is just simply use our surfaces menu and we're going to basically just planar it or create a planar from it okay so let's go ahead and you can select either one first um, preferably, preferably it's better if you go ahead and select the outer um, circle first select the, the plus symbol and I'm just going to go ahead and use the script that I use which you know freezes the transformation center the pivots and um, deletes the history off of it so I'm going to go ahead and run that go into our surfaces <coughs> pull down here go into our planar and these are the the settings that I'm using and I'll give you a second or two here to go ahead and match them and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit hit apply here and right off the bat you can see where our geometry comes out in a way that it's it sort of shows you how we were we we're gonna go ahead and cut that plus symbol in okay so let's go ahead and select the geometry I'm gonna go ahead and run that script and I'm gonna go ahead and just select these curves okay add it to its own layer and just rename it button curves just so I know exactly what it is okay and I'll go ahead and move this down but you can see right away where we do have some errors and some you know left off of geometry so what I want to go ahead and do here is I'm not going to go ahead and basically edit all four sides of this so I want to go ahead and delete three quarters of it so let's go ahead and delete that half and then we'll go ahead and delete this quarter so we're basically left with one quarter of the mesh okay now obviously you can see here where there is some geometric errors and some problems and some triangles and we're gonna do our best to to go ahead and eliminate these so what I want to go ahead and do is go into our polygons shelf okay window object mode and I'm going to go ahead here and uh, select our split polygon tool and I'm going to draw an edge here 
and draw it all the way out to the end of the mesh. I'm basically going to do the same here for the for the other side or the other corner here. Okay. Now you can see where we have two big triangles, which are here and here, and I'm not going to edit that right away because I need to figure out well how is this geometry basically going to connect. Okay, and so I need to go ahead and draw another another edge here and here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw another edge here, here, and here. Since we have, you know, pretty much a quad quad geometry layout here, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to merge these two verts, which is just simply in our polygon menu here and I just hit F3 there for the shortcut it's under edit mesh and I'd say about three quarters of the way down which is just the merge tool which merges those verts and I'm gonna go ahead and select those two and merge those verts and right away you can see where we have one big end gone or one big five-sided face so we need to figure out a way to actually go ahead and cut that geometry so that it's going to be quads and the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and bring back that NURBS curve and I want to try to match this as, as much as I can so that it's going to be fairly circular and round whenever we go to smooth this and I'm just adjusting these words a little bit so that it does match it a little bit better here go ahead and move this up a little bit here Okay, so that's good. Now let's go ahead and cut the rest of our geometry in here. And I'll go back to my polygon shelf here and I'm going to use the same split polygon tool here. And I'm going to draw one from here all the way out to the edge. That'll give us a four-sided face on all of them. And I just need to adjust that vertice just a little bit there. And just to double check that it's going to give us a full um, a full four-sided face mesh, I'm going to go into my mesh menu here, go down to cleanup, and you can see the settings that I have set here. I'm just going to hit apply, and you can see that there's still uh, two five-sided faces, okay? So I'm just going to hit close, and I just want to make sure that it's this one and this one. So I'm going to need to go ahead and draw polygon there okay and then we need to do the same thing here on the other side and just connect that and then we'll just simply take that edge out of the equation and we need to draw one here here and here and now we have a full four-sided mesh as you can see so now all we simply have to do here is just make sure that all these these edges simply line up same with these vertices we'll go into our mesh menu and we're just simply going to mirror geometry here and then we'll do oh, I mirrored that one in the wrong direction there I apologize and you can see right away where we have a really good plus shape inside of our circular polygon which is going to give us a an opportunity to be able to smooth that smooth that mesh pretty much perfectly so now from this what we're going to basically do is we're going to be making both our plus and minus shape and so what I want to go ahead and do here is fill this hole and cut the extra geometry and basically connect all that extra geometry so that we don't have to really edit it later so let's just go ahead and double select the edge so it'll select the entire edge here go to mesh and fill hole and this simply just does exactly what it says it fills that hole and now all I really need to go ahead and do here 
is just connect all of these up. So let's just go back to our split polygon tool and just start con connecting edges here. And I'm just hitting G to go ahead and repeat the last tool used. And I'm just going to simply draw out this entire mesh here. And this will just take a, a little bit of time to go ahead and get all these edges, you know, pretty much connected well. And you can simply just go straight across there. Do this side here. And it's just basically draw it out and hit enter to, you know, connect the tool. Once you draw it on both sides. see where I didn't draw it all the way there. There we go. So now I'm just going to hit 3 just to make sure that it's smoothing properly and move it up so, so I can see if we have any um, geometric errors here anywhere. And as you can see we don't. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just basically duplicate this once. Okay, And that's going to be our minus shape. <coughs> So now let's go ahead and select these faces of where the plus sign would be. And you just have to be careful that you select the same faces on both sides of the model here. Okay. And I'm just going to go into my shelf and simply just use our inset tool here. And then I'll just go ahead and extrude down. And you can see that it gives us that plus shape here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and use our inset edge loop tool. Just pressing one on my keyboard so that it's unsmoothed. And just add a couple extra edge loops so that this all maintains its shape. And I just need to make sure that I have one there and that's okay. Making sure that that's all smooth. And that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead here and just do the minus shape. Just selecting all those faces that would be, you know, just for the minus shape here. And just, you know, basically use the same process over. Use the inset tool. Bring it in a little bit. Use the extrude tool. Push it down. Go ahead and add our edge loops here. And this is just so that it, you know, maintains its shape and holds it smooth fairly well whenever we go to smooth it. And you can see we have our plus and minus buttons here. So now all I want to do is just basically select the outer edges here on the minus shape and just hit the extrude tool. And I want to go ahead and extrude this out just a little bit. Not too much because I want to be able to get an edge loop in there so that it holds that shape really well and then I'll just go ahead and extrude down and that should be thick enough so let's go ahead and add the edge loops here on the on the edges so that it's going to maintain its border and you can see that that's really good so let's go ahead and do the same thing here for the plus shape just hitting the extrude tool scale that out a little bit and extrude again so that we go down so we have a little bit of thickness on it and just add these edge loops so that it maintains its shape and there we go those are our plus and minus buttons that we will be using for our iPhone